Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we will continue talking about Euler's formula, uh, which basically defines um, a complex exponential. Um, now, I was explaining in the previous lecture certain um, considerations, basically certain reasoning behind this formula. I didn't prove this, so basically I would like to take this formula as a definition of um, complex exponent. And to prove that this particular definition makes sense, um, I would like to go through regular properties of um, exponent and basically prove that all these properties um, are held for this definition. That would kind of confirm um, the validity of all this. So let's just go through the properties of exponents and uh, see if um, everything is really reasonable according to the rules of exponential functions. All right, now the first is Remember, we had this rule. Now, what if the exponent is um, complex? Well, in our case, we are talking about exponent, uh, about complex exponent, but only imaginary part of it, because the, the real part is just a, a factor in this particular case. So, let's take e to the power of e times zero. Now, what that would be, according to this definition, it's a cosine of an angle of zero radians plus I sine. Now, this is zero, this is one, so we have one. So, this rule is held. Okay, next. A little bit less trivial. Now, less trivial rule which is basically one of the fundamental uh, rules of exponents is this one. Sum of the exponent is basically a product of separate expressions for the same base and each exponent is used separately and then we multiply the, the results. All right, now, is this uh, held for this particular definition? Well, let's try e to the power ix plus y equals to cosine of x plus y plus i sine of x plus y, according to the definition, right? Now, e to the power ix times e to the power iy, so that's basically the product of these, right? It's equal to this times the same with y, right? So it's cosine x plus i sine x times cosine y plus i sine y equals cosine the cosine Now that's the real part. Now another real component is sine by sine because there is an i by i which is i square, which is minus 1. So it's minus sinus x sine y. Now, the imaginary component is i sine by cosine sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. All right, so let's compare this expression and this expression. Well, I mean, obviously they are identical because we know that the cosine of a sum of two angles is cosine by cosine minus sine by sine. So this is exactly equals to this. And the sine of the uh, sum of two angles is sine cosine plus cosine sine. So these are identical formulas. That's why this is equal to this, 
which proves actu actually that this rule is held for um, complex exponents. Next. So, so far this definition seems to be reasonable. That's actually my purpose, to prove that this is reasonable. Now, another property. Well, this is basically a definition of the negative um, exponent, right? So, the um, negative exponent is such a number which, if multiplied by uh, the positive exponent, would give 1, right? That's what it means. So that's how we define negative, negative exponent. It's 1 over the positive one, right? Well, let's check if this actually is true. Now, e to the power minus ix, I would like to prove that this is 1 over e to the power of ix, which means multiplied by e to the power of ix, it should be equal to 1. Now, is this true? Well, it is, because we have already um, we have already proven that you can add the exponents and if you add them you will get 0 and e to the power of 0 would be 1. So that, that rule is also held. What else? Uh, the multiplication of the exponents So, e to the power of ix to the power of y is equal to e x y. Okay. Now, how to prove this? Well, this is a little bit more involved. And uh, here is the way how I would approach it. First, if y is a natural number n, is this true? Well, let's just think about it. e to the power ix to the power of n is basically a multiplication of e to the power of ix n times, right? n times. Now, we know that if you are multiplying this, you can basically say this is the e and the power will be, the exponent will be a sum of these, which means ix plus ix plus etc plus ix n times, which is equal to e to the power of ix n, right? So, for integer, positive integer n, the formula is true. Well, actually, for non-negative, because for n is equal to 0, it's also true. Now, for negative n, it's also true, because we have already proven this. Uh, so, if you multiply this to the power of n, that's this to the power of n, and obviously n goes to denominator, um, which means that this is equal to e to the power minus i, uh, uh, I x n, which is necessary to prove, right? So, basically for any integer n, it's true. Now, let's talk about rational n, rational y. Let's y be equals to p over q. And I'm talking about positive just for the um, uh, sake of the time. Now, what does it mean? Now, you remember that we have actually defined this as 
such a number which if raised into the power of q gives a to the power of p right so it's a in other words it's q's root of a to the power of p that's how we defined it basically right so it means that by definition of this rational um, rational uh, exponent I have to basically prove that this raised to the q's degree is equal to e to the i x to the power of p that's what I have to prove right well this is definition of um, I, I don't have to prove this this is a definition of p over q used as an exponent but uh, what I have to prove is that um, e to the power of i x to the power of p over q equals to e to the power i x p uh, over q now what this means this means that e to the power i x uh, p over q to the power of q equals e to the power i x p so this is definition this is definition of this thing and this is definition of this thing right and I basically have to prove that this is equal to this because I'm raising to the power of q the left part and I'm raising to the power of q this thing this thing right this thing so considering I have raised into the power of q and I have exactly the same results because I have already proven that for any integer um, exponent this is true which means that whatever I was raising into the power of q which is this thing in this case and this thing in that case they are equal so e to the power i x to the power of p over q is equal to e to the power i x p over q that actually have been proven because if i'm raising both into the power of q i get the same results and these are the same because i have just already proven it for an integer p so that pro that proves actually that this this is actually true. Again, it follows from the definition of the fractional exponent. Okay, next. Next is something which is not exactly related to um, properties of the exponential functions but nevertheless it's very important for complex exponent the modulo is equals to one well this modulus um, or absolute value if you wish um, what is this well if you have a complex number represented as a plus i b this is a this is b the length of this is actually the modulus let's call it r and if this is an angle phi then this is the same as r times cosine phi because the cosine is a right r times cosine a plus i sine phi right so lo and behold our definition our definition of e to the power of i x is exactly this uh, graphical representation um, on on the coordinate plane 
of the complex number. And obviously, r is equal to 1 in this particular case, because what is r? r squared is equal to r squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, right? So cosine square x plus sine square x, which is 1. So that proves that for any x, the modulus or absolute value of e to the power of ix is equal to 1, which means that for any x, all these numbers are on the unit circle and x is just an angle in radians so that's the geometric representation of this and finally what I would like to point out is that you remember that whenever you multiply any complex number wherever it is z by number which is represented in polar form in in coordinate form um, uh, with uh, uh, modulus and, uh, and, and an angle, this is a combination of two uh, different actions. Number one, you multiply the modulus of z by the modulus of this number. And in this case, the modulus is 1, so we don't really uh, multiply it on anything. So z basically uh, retains its length. But then, multiplying by this actually means a rotation of this angle by this. So the new, um, uh, new complex number, which is the result of multiplication of z by, by this, is just a rotation of um, this particular uh, vector by an angle x in this case, or phi, whatever, whatever the letter is used. So that's my last property, basically. z times e to the i x is a rotation by x radians. Well, that's it. That's all the properties I wanted to talk about when defining my um, complex exponent. So, um, these properties are just a confirmation that um, whatever we have defined is a reasonable definition. Well, that's it. Thanks very much and good luck.